Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be going over 10 ways college science classes are different from high school science classes. So if you're thinking about taking college science courses or becoming a college science major, this video is for you. Now you may be aware of some of these already, but make sure you stay tuned through the whole video so you hear all of the really important differences you should be aware of before you take classes in college in science. And if you're interested in being a bio major, I invite you to check out my other video, 10 things I wish I would have known before I became a bio major, which I'll link in the description below. Number one textbook reading. No matter how much reading you had to do in your high school science classes, even in AP classes, there's probably going to be more in your college science classes. In fact, most professors will assign a certain number of chapters or pages between every class that you are expected to have already read and be knowledgeable about by the time the next class arrives. Hopefully you'll get a little bit faster and better at comprehending college level science textbooks. And if you need strategies for that, I also have a video about how to read faster and understand more in scientific reading. Number two, they're big. You might have heard that college science classes are much bigger than your high school science classes, and that is definitely true, especially at the lower level courses for your undergraduate program. In Bio 101, Chem 101, Chem 102, all of these classes are going to probably include several hundred students unless you're at a very small college or university. This is because a lot of students need to take these classes for major requirements or if they're exploring pre-med or other pre-health programs. Often these big lecture classes are referred to as weed out classes because they're so huge huge and they want to deter anybody who's not really serious about pursuing that field of study or that type of major and separate the really exceptional students from the students who are just average. Now I know this sounds scary, but there are ways to get the most out of these really big lecture classes and we'll talk about some of those later in this video. Number three, lab sections. In addition to those big lecture classes, you're probably going to have laboratory sections. Now, in your high school science classes, you might have been used to having labs every once in a while, if you were lucky. In college, you're going to have an entire separate course called your lab section that goes along with many of your science courses. For example, there's Chem 101 and then there's Chem 101 Lab. Usually the full course is worth about three credits and the lab section is just one credit, so it's weighted a little bit differently in your GPA, but you will have to attend your lab section separately from your main lecture section in order to receive credit for that course. Usually these labs are taught by TAs as well. They're not going to be taught directly by the professors in order to spread out the attention and give you a little bit more one-on-one -on -one instruction. Which brings me to number four. Number four, TAs. So you might have had a TA or a teaching assistant in your high school science class, but this student probably just helped the teacher with setting up labs or maybe with grading a few items. The TAs in many college science courses are there to also help with instruction. They're not only going to be teaching you things, but they're going to be helping maybe with a recitation section. They're going to be directly instructing you in the labs and they might even hold their own office hours as well. You should use your TAs as an important resource, but keep in mind that these are students, maybe upper level undergraduate students or graduate students who may not have as much teaching experience as your actual professor. So you can always go directly to the professor for office hours if you have specific questions that the TAs can't answer or you found a little bit difficult to understand when the TAs are explaining it. But keep that in mind that TAs usually grade some of the work that you're going to be doing, especially laboratory work. So you want to make sure you talk to them and get a good idea about what they're looking for in those courses. Number five, what's graded? A lot of times in high school science classes, you might have had a lot of different opportunities to show what you learned, projects, tests, papers, homework, participation, whatever. Some college science courses still have different grade categories, such as in-class participations with clicker questions or homework, guided reading questions, but most of your grade is actually going to come from tests. And in fact, a lot of college science courses have the pattern of having several large tests and then one big exam. In fact, at UNC, usually the common pattern in the biology and chemistry department is to have three tests and one final exam and then one of those test grades is dropped your lowest one and that's what your grade comes from now if you're usually a strong student but a poor test taker this could put you at a disadvantage in your college science courses so make sure you're fully aware of how grades are gonna work at the start of the semester so that you can plan for that and maybe go and get some additional help on test taking strategies and study strategies if you need it next up because the courses are very large a lot of times they are very challenging and difficult and the majority of students will get low B's or high C's. The average student, in fact, is going to get this grade at most colleges and universities, especially the larger ones. Now, you may be thinking, especially if you're an A-level student in high school, that's not going to happen to me. I've always gotten A's before. Even if you were a top student in high school, you may be getting your first 
C's or D's in college science. It's not that you're not a good student, it's that you're coming into a place with hundreds of other top students from other high schools and you can't all be the top student at your college or university. Some college professors grade on a curve, but others just make their work intentionally challenging in order to separate the really exceptional students from the average students. Another thing about grading is that anything that is brought up in the course, including textbook reading, things that are mentioned in lectures, things in your homework problems, all of that is fair game for the exam. So even if your professor didn't spend a lot of time on it in lecture, it could still show up on the exam because you were expected to learn it on your own. This is a shock for a lot of students who get to an exam and say, wait, we didn't cover this or practice this in class, but it's because there is that expectation that you understand, that you do and understand, that you do and understand the textbook reading and that you also are keeping up with work and going to office hours or meeting with study groups if you have questions or things that you need cleared up. And speaking of that, we come to number six. Number six, teaching style. In college, a lot of the teaching style is gonna be lecture-based. Now, in some of the lower level undergraduate courses, you may have a little bit more active learning strategies thrown in, like I said before, clicker questions, guided discussions within the class. And in the upper level undergraduate courses, you might have opportunities to have discussions or larger projects that you'll do with other students in the course. But the majority of the traditional college level instructional style still to this day is lecture-based. Number seven, technology. In your college science courses, you're probably going to be allowed to use whatever technology that you have on hand, tablets, laptops, your phone, in order to follow along with the class or do instructional activities. Your professor probably has guidelines for this in their syllabus, but usually it's a lot more lax than your high school environment, especially large lecture sections. Professors aren't going to police you on what you can use or not use in class. So make sure that you are setting limits for yourself on what you are comfortable using and what you know you're not going to get distracted with in class. Another thing in the realm of technology is within the lab sections, you'll be able to use a lot more laboratory technology that you might not have been able to touch or use in your high school science class. So that can be really exciting too, and it's a great opportunity to get your hands dirty with some real scientific equipment. Number eight, duration. So college science courses go fast. You're probably gonna meet with them either twice a week or three times a week, depending on the pattern and the length of the course. They usually last for one semester, so you'll start in your fall semester in August or September and go through December, and then you'll start in your spring semester in January and go through April or May. Now this will be seen fast at the start, and if you wanna build a relationship with your professors or TAs, you wanna make sure you get that started quickly and you're not knocking on their door for office hours at the very end of the semester after you've been lost for several months. If you've come from a block schedule in high school, this might not seem as different, but if you've come from a year-round schedule, this may seem very fast-paced and different. Number nine, fast-paced. Which brings us to number nine, the pace of the course. This is gonna be much faster than your high school courses, even if you were a student who was in an AP course or a course that had a lot of content to cover. You may be expected to learn material, like I said before, outside of class on your own, or a difficult and challenging idea, you may be expected to pick up on it quicker with fewer examples and practice problems. So again, if you only ever see one practice problem of something, you could end up seeing that or even a more challenging version of that on your exam. Number 10, they're just harder. College level science courses are just harder. They're gonna be more complex, they're gonna have more content to cover, go deeper in the content, have more specific questions and case studies that they're gonna focus on, and the tests are gonna be more application-based and much less memorization-based for most of your college science courses. I would say my two most heavy memorization courses when I was a college biology major were my anatomy courses and my local flora class where I had to memorize a bunch of different plants and their scientific names. But in many other of my science courses, I had to do a lot of the assignments, including laboratory assignments and tests that I took, were very much application-based that dug much deeper than the surface level memorization skills. And though this may seem scary or difficult for a lot of students, many students often find it exciting to really get into the cool, in-depth scientific application that you will be able to do in your college science courses. What other differences are you aware of or have you noticed in your college science courses if you're currently in college? What are you curious about if you're a high school student? Give this video a like if it's been helpful. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see See you later.